you ever created a chatbot or a workflow automation or any other kind of automation within the web space or within your AI automation agency, you certainly have heard of the terms API and webhooks, <laughs> which is surprisingly very unknown where the difference is. And I think it mostly has to do with the fact that a lot of people don't even know how exactly those things should be structured in the first place. So in today's video, we're going to make a small little dive into what the difference is between webhooks and APIs. I will give you my explanation, what I learned over the past seven years within the automation industry, so that you get an understanding of what the difference is, where you should use what and where you should call what. A little bit about myself, I'm Yannis and I'm inside of the tech industry since 2015. I have founded multiple software products, including WP Webhooks, which basically is a workflow automation service that runs on WordPress with over 100 plus integrations so that you can automate workflows directly on a website and you literally don't need to code anything for that. It's all visual, similar to things like, you know, with Mac.com, but fully privacy oriented. In total, we have helped over 100,000 businesses to become better, to make more with less so that they can thrive more, they can focus on the tasks that are most important to them. And right now, my journey is to help people like you who leverage automation to get a super good understanding about it so that you can implement it into your business for your clients that you can make an actual agency or other type of business out of it and just thrive the same way I did. To give you a basic understanding of the difference between a webhook and an API, I have to disappoint you, but it's mostly the same. The difference actually is not from a technological perspective, but it's more from something that you give it as a purpose. As you can see on the screen here, the foundation is literally identical. So you use the same requests, use the same kind of logic. You even use the same kind of formats. And the funniest of all is they can literally interact with each other. So webhooks can interact with APIs, APIs can interact with webhooks more or less but it's basically from the fundamentals possible. So since it's nearly the same, where's the difference? And like I mentioned, it's in the purpose. And this is something that I discovered over creating hundreds and hundreds of integrations for clients and for our own products. It is very, very simple to understand with the two pictures I just have on screen here. You can see a webhook is you are literally screaming at someone. So you just shouting out something you don't give a damn of what the person thinks or or what your response you literally just want to get your message out while a api is more like a conversation with a different person and as you can see here on the screen there's two other possible differences and what i mean by that is that a webhook just sends information out so you're shouting at someone it sends the information out it doesn't care what the other person does with the information he has the information that is all the person who shouts cares about and that's literally it for a webhook. For an API, it's more complex. You're asking the person something or you, you want the person to do something and the person gives you a response and you take the response and do something else with it or re-ask another question based on whatever you, the, the response was. So those are the two main differences. Just keep them in mind for now. We will get into them a little bit more in detail in the future slides. As you can see on the screen as well, there's two other possible differences that I'd like to point out, which in the end can be used on both of them but they only make sense for APIs, which is the authentication, because it's usually something that is used with APIs because they're dealing with more sensitive data. So would not, you would usually not use a webhook for creating users or for updating users, but you would use an API for that because you don't want everyone with a URL to be actually able to create a specific user, right? So you want them to authenticate and make sure the one who makes the request is actually uh, robot that it's it's supposed to be you know so that it's your server that it's coming from a service that you allowed or you give it access to access to the other difference is headers so there can be different kind of headers usually webhooks like i mentioned don't expect the response the api says something called an accept header which means you basically already defined to the other person hey i'm asking you that please tell it to me in that specific format or, or tell it to me in that or i just want to know what exactly that means just say that to me like you've seen from my previous video with the requests you're just defining some specific scope that you would like the, the recipient of the request to respond back to you. Now let's get into the actual webhooks. So I made a cute little slide that explains a little bit more where webhooks are used. And the most simple explanation is wherever you don't need a response. So wherever you really don't care about a response. When you see things like Stripe, it's very obvious. Whenever a new order comes in, you just send a webhook. Whenever a subscription got updated, you can send a webhook. When some subscription got canceled, you send a webhook. It's information that Stripe sends out, but it doesn't necessarily necessarily needs a request, even though Stripe is that advanced that it does it to make sure 
that you actually that the request actually arrived at the end but with most services i can already tell you and promise you it's not the case so i would also like you to keep in mind that even though webhooks don't need a response they still get a response if they want it or not most services still deliver a response if they are properly coded which should be the case if not i would suggest you to Look for a different service that actually sends you a response just because it tells a lot about the person behind who actually wrote that code. And there are two main things that I found over the years for which our webhooks use, which first of all are triggers, which basically is nothing else than an event. Like I mentioned, when an order was created, a user signed up for a newsletter, a user registered on your website, something like that. And secondly, as a bridge, which becomes a little more complex, but if you give you one specific example, it becomes again super easy. You probably have heard about make.com or Zapier or Integrately, Public Connect, Power Automate. There are tons of services out there. All of those are more like, like bridge services. So you actually use a webhook to start a specific workflow, which again makes the webhook look like an action, but it's actually just a bridge trigger that triggers another workflow. So it can become complicated if you go down to the naming, but we just call it bridging. So you literally just take a webhook to trigger another webhook. To send the stuff out there's usually also no authentication used because things like make.com with their webhook integrations don't require any automation uh, any authentication same thing counts for zapier and for the other services so that's literally the whole magic about webhooks everything you see on the screen here is the whole difference that separates webhooks from apis and to give you some more context on the api space i made another slide here which of course makes it very simple to understand as well. You can basically define anything as an API as long as you do something with a request or you actually expect a specific request. And that is usually used for doing some actions, for creating users or for signing someone up into a newsletter or for creating a payment. And why is the response in that case needed? Very easy to understand. Let's imagine you want to create a user. You send out a request with a goal to create a user. On the other side, the receiver takes the request, blah, 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 does something, creates the user and now returns an ID, which is usually what you want to run other actions afterward, because otherwise you, you lose the reference that you need to continue with the automation workflows. So the API is basically used to get the user ID in the response and to do something else afterward, which can be updating the user ID in a different database, sending specific information to the user ID, updating the user again with other information that you were collecting in the meantime, etc. And you can do the exact same thing as a, as a bridge. You can use the exact same API structure as a bridge for tools like Stackpath, which kind of is uh, similar to make.com, but with a difference that Stackpath actually gives you a response when you start workflows. So with make.com, you don't get any specific response. You get like an accept response, which just tells you it got accepted, that's it. But with Stackpath, you actually get a response that is meaningful in the sense of you send information and you expect specific information back. That is something Stackpath does. So for that, you can use APIs. You can also use webhooks, but it's prefer to use APIs for something like that to get that information because you usually want to have a response back. Now in all of those talks with either APIs or webhooks, I often talk about triggers and actions and that is actually something that I call the purposed requests, which is often used by tools or no or local tools specifically that are out there like Mac.com, Zapier. You will see a lot within their documentations things called actions and things called triggers. So triggers is basically nothing else than what webhooks do. They fire on a specific event, while actions are the equivalent to do the exact opposite. That sounds very weird, but it's actually kind of true. So with an action, you basically do something while the trigger fires on an event. As you can see in my presentation, I displayed with two pictures. One is the button to ring a bell, which can be the trigger. So whenever the bell is rung, a trigger is sent. And the action is more like the finger that actually presses the bell because it does something, right? So just to give you a little bit of, uh, of some pictures to what I'm actually telling you theoretically. And lastly, I would like to share a little bonus with you. And that is that you should always be flexible and focus on one, on one aspect only, which is if you either need a response or you don't. This is the most common thing you should think about when you have to decide whether you have to use webhooks or APIs, because like I mentioned in the end, it's mostly the same. So if you are building chatbots and you want to get a specific information, you most likely use an API because you want to get a response back. While if you use a chatbot and you want to sign someone up for the newsletter and you don't really care about the ID or it really doesn't matter for you, use a make.com scenario, you trigger something else, you don't expect the response. So it's more likely to be considered a webhook. And why I mentioned be flexible, because 
it's a big war zone out there, literally. Like it's a whole mess, that whole API, resource structure, etc. A lot of different companies use different methods, they use different setups, they have no proper structure. You always just need to find a way through by reading the documentation and everything I learned here in today's video basically gives you a good understanding of how you can figure out how the things should be set up and what works for you. That's it. You literally just learned the difference between webhooks and APIs. And I hope it helps you to build better workflows, to bring better products to your customers. If you liked it, I would love if you liked the video, if you subscribe to my channel, and if you have any questions, feel always free to drop them in the comments. Take care, until next time.